SpaceX just launched the largest rocket to ever reach space. And though this is a major milestone for the company, when you look back at the history of the company, you'll see that they reached this major milestone on the back of countless failures over the years. And I should know because I used to work there. I was the head of training development at SpaceX. And so I got to see from the inside how they use failure to actually propel their success instead of holding them back. So in this video, what I want to do is break down the four major ways that you can do the exact same thing in your organization. I'll show you how this and this and this led to this. Four, three, two, one. We have the bus. So for a little bit of background for those who haven't been following the program, Starship is the vehicle that SpaceX is hoping to use to colonize Mars, right? So they've been st they started the company many years ago flying the Falcon 1 rocket. They've been incredibly successful over the last decade with the Falcon 9. It's now the most successful launch vehicle in the history of the world. And they're trying to up their game to the next level with this new massive rocket, which is actually the largest rocket to have ever reached space. Space. It's fundamentally going to change the game of space exploration if they get it to work. So today is November 18th, and this morning they successfully flew the second test flight of this rocket. And so they did all these amazing things, still had some things fail, but those failures are really what are going to propel them forward. The thing that makes SpaceX so different from every other company is that they use these failures to push them forward. So how do they do that? Well, when I reflect on my time and I think about the things that I've seen since leaving SpaceX, I think it really comes down to four main components. So the first thing you need to do is start off with incredibly ambitious and audacious goals. That way, when you fail, you've still really achieved a lot. So think about SpaceX, even with Falcon 1, right? Falcon 1, they were trying to be the first private company ever to get to orbit. The first company ever. So a huge, huge achievement. With Falcon 9, they were trying to be the first company ever to reuse rockets. Like every rocket in history has just been thrown away after a single use, and they were trying to change that. Like huge goals. The point of the company isn't to just get into space. Remember, the point, the mission of SpaceX is to make humans multiplanetary. There's not much of a more ambitious goal that you could set for that. So when you're thinking about programs that you're doing, how big are you thinking with these goals? If you aim for mediocrity and then fail to achieve it, well, then you're just really going to be disappointed because you, you haven't even met like kind of the average. Whereas if you set these really, really high ambitious goals, that's how you create a situation where even in failure, you are still moving forward. So that's the first step. Set incredibly audacious goals. The second thing you really want to do is to create a program that expects failure, right? In SpaceX's case, what this looks like is having an incredibly hardware rich environment, right? They have built hundreds of Raptor engines because they've blown up probably at least dozens of Raptor engines, right? If you look at footage from Boca Chica where they're launching Starship from, there are already multiple fully complete boosters may, minus the engines, but like the structure is all there ready to go that they have already created so that assuming that this rocket wasn't going to be 100% successful, assuming there were going to be failures, they're going to be able to just figure out what went wrong, make some tweaks, put it into the next booster, and then launch again, right? There's not going to be this incredibly long turnaround time. You contrast that with other programs. The easiest one to compare it to is the Space Launch System, the, the big NASA rocket, where they're going to be going multiple years in between launches, where chances are, we don't know yet, there's probably only going to be a few months maybe between this launch and the next launch, depending on what went wrong, depending on how many changes there are. But so they have set themselves up so that when failures happen, they don't have to completely stop everything and, you know, re and start from scratch. They are able to quickly fold in the lessons learned and keep moving forward. So when you're looking at your programs, whether that's from a schedule perspective, whether that's from a resourcing perspective, 
You want to plan everything out, assuming that failures will occur. That way, when a failure happens, it's not unexpected. It doesn't stop you in your tracks. That way, you're able to continue with your progress, keep moving forward when those failures inevitably happen. The third thing you need to do, and this is something that actually I heard come straight out of the mouth of the former VP of Build and Flight Reliability at SpaceX, Hans Koenigsmann, where he was talking to a bunch of engineers about risk. And basically what he said is he, he encouraged people to take risks, but then he said, never take risks alone. And I think this is really important because human beings, we all you know, have our own view of the world that is based on the information that we have. And we really never have the full and complete picture, right? We're, we're never able to anticipate everything, think of everything. And it's just not possible, especially in complex systems, for one person to be able to do that. And at SpaceX, Elon often talked about how Every engineer was expected to be a systems engineer, right? It wasn't your job just to make sure that your one part worked. It was your job to make sure that your one part worked in the context of the entire system. And the only way you can do that is by working together. So you need to be thinking about, I have this risk that I'm worried might lead to a failure. What's that going to be doing to the adjacent parts, to the other people that I'm working with, to the other parts of this program? You want to be talking to other people rather than just assuming this risk seems worth it, this risk seems okay. You, you shouldn't be making that decision on your own. You should be talking to the other people around you so they can give you input of one, how big is this risk actually? Two, how is this risk going to be affecting other people? And then are there ways that you can mitigate this risk that you're not thinking about? So not taking risk alone is, is really, really critical, making it kind of this, this team sport. So whenever any project that you are working on inside an organization, I guarantee you there's multiple stakeholders. There, there's multiple people both upstream and downstream from you. Things going wrong with your program are going to affect other people. So make sure you're talking to as many people as possible, getting that collaborative discussion happening so that you're really making dis risk decisions, especially ha with as much information as possible. And you're, you have kind of a group buy-in on, yes, this risk is worth it because that's how you make sure that a particular failure isn't fatal to the entire program, but it is again something that's actually going to move you forward. And then the fourth and final thing that you really need to do with all of the risks that you're taking is make sure you know how you are going to learn from these failures. That could be you know, what you're trying to learn from the failure, right? That's a really important thing just to, just from the start of like, if this fails, what will we now know, right? Any program has a lot of unknowns in it, any new thing that you're doing. And so any risk that you take should only be because you're answering those unknowns. And again, that's how you move yourself forward. So you should know what question you're trying to answer by taking this risk. And then know how you're going to get the information, right? Again, going back to SpaceX's case, that's why they instrument the heck out of these rockets, right? You know, even in Rocket Lab is another example where their rockets have so many sensors all across them, whether that's, you know, and they have telemetry feeds and they have cam reviews. They're getting all of this information to make sure that when something goes wrong, they know how to solve it. They, they, they can see what went wrong and figure out, oh, that was the thing that we didn't understand understand. Now we understand it. Now we know how to fix it. Because if you're not getting that information, if you don't learn anything from the failure, then it was a, a real failure, right? Then it, that's, that's when a failure is bad, when you're not learning from it. So making sure you know what you're trying to learn and how you're going to learn it is critical. SpaceX is a tremendous success. They are by far changing the game when it comes to space exploration. Those successes are happening because of the way SpaceX fails. They make sure that they start with super audacious goals. They create a schedule and a program that expects failure. They never take risks alone, and they make sure that any risks they do take, they have a reason for taking them. They know what they're going to be learning, and they make sure they have a way to learn it. If you can start to incorporate those things into your programs, your systems, your projects, your things that you're trying to do, I guarantee you, you're going to see a dramatic change in the way your 
programs move forward. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, if you if you like this kind of content, there's going to be a lot more of it coming forward. We already have been posting the Making Better podcast here, which is a weekly podcast that you can get tips and tricks of how to improve your talent development practices in your organization. And we're going to be bringing a lot more to you as we finish out 2023 and into 2024. So make sure you subscribe. And I can't wait to see you on the next video.